الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على عشرف الأنبياء والمرسلين حبيب إله العالمين عبد القاسم المصطفى محمد وعليه الطاهرين المعصومين المنتجبين الذين أضحب الله عنهم الرجس وطحرهم تطحيرا محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وعلى محمد قال الله تعالى في القرآن الكريم بعد أعوذ بالله من الشيطان اللعين الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم وقالوا لو كنا نسمع أو نأكل ما كنا في أصحاب السعير قال الله تعالى في القرآن الكريم إنهم يرونه بعيدا ونراه قريبا سرك الله العلي العظيم وبلغ رسول كريم ونحن على ذلك من الشاخدين والشاكرين آمنا بالله السلام عليك يا أبا عبد الله الحسين وعلى الأرواح التي حلت بفنائك عليك مني السلام الله أبدا ما بقيت وبقي الليل والنهار ولا جعله الله آخر الأخذ مني لزيارتكم جميعا السلام على الحسين وعلى علي بن الحسين وعلى أولاد الحسين وعلى أصحاب الحسين جميعا ورحمة الله وبركاته We begin in the name of Allah Tabarak wa Ta'ala who is the most kind and the most merciful We send salutation to Rasulullah in Ahl al-Bayt alayhum as-salatu wa salam Respected brothers and sisters Our program tonight is going to be about developing a positive mindset in the light of Ashura. It is important to explain a little bit about our topic Karbala is a battle between Imam al Hussein alayhi salatu was salam and Yazid alayhi la'ana. It is important to also explain that Yazid alayhi la'ana represent a particular mindset Imam al-Hussein alayhi salatu was salam also represented a particular mindset 
So in other words, it is a clash of mindset. Mm -hmm. From day one until the day of Karbala, you see mindset displayed. From the side of Imam al Hussein alayhi salatu was salam, his family and his companions, when you study their lives very well, you understand the force behind their movement. When you look at the other side, in the camp of Yazid alayhi lana and study the leadership, studied the companions, the forces of Yazid, you realize that they also represent a kind of mindset. Imam al Hussein alayhi salatu was salam, when he left Medina, in fact, before he leaves Medina, he announced his intention for leaving. Sallallahu ala Muhammad wa ala Muhammad. So he told the people why he was leaving Medina that Yazid wanted bay'a from him. And he told them how Yazid was blood testy. And he also told them the possibility of Yazid crushing and killing whoever goes against his orders. Imam al Hussein alayhi salatu was salam took the family. started his journey, arrives in Mecca. In fact, now, before we even proceed, there is one thing we learn from Abu Abdullah al Hussein. Imam al Hussein could have left silently, secretly, but he summoned the people, his neighbors, the people around him, and he told them why he is living. That's one thing that we learn from the thinking of Abu Abdullah al Hussein. He arrives in Mecca with the intention of performing the Hajj with the intention to receive support from the different people that will that may be coming for the Hajj. But Imam al Hussein alayhi salatu was salam was also aware about a particular mindset that the Umayyad and their children have. Mm -hmm. Yazid alayhi lana was known for giving bribe, was known for making things easier by giving money. So this came to the attention of Imam al Hussein alayhi salatu was salam. Instead of performing the Hajj, he performed Umrah. Quran speaks about the condition of Imam al Hussein alayhi salatu was salam. Yesterday I was mentioning this in our majlis. فَخَرَجَ فِيهَا خَائِفًا يَتَرَقَّبُ This is actually a verse 
that explain the situation of Nabi Musa after causing Imam al Hussein was very careful because he knows, he understands the mindset that gave birth to a person like Yazid. And then he left. Sallallahu alayhi wa Muhammad wa alayhi wa Muhammad. So in each and every step we move we see this clash of the mindset if you look at the holy quran al kareem you realize that the mindset is everything that when we rise, we rise because of our mindset. And when we fall, we also fall because of our mindset. Maybe it will be important for me to define what the mindset is. Yesterday, I tried to do that. The mindset is our thought process and belief system. The mindset is what influences our reaction to certain things and helps us to make a decision. You see Imam al Hussein alayhi salatu was salam in his situation and his reaction carrying his family with him. And on the other side, you see their reaction, the bloodthirsty, mm -hmm. the greediness for wanting. Imam al Hussein alayhi salatu was salam to pledge allegiance to them. Once mindset can be influenced by their upbringing, very important. Our mindset is often shaped by our tarbiya. And we do have three kinds of terbiya. The first kind of terbiya is very popular. That is the terbiya of bringing our children. It is very important to understand that the way you bring up your children determines the kind of mindset they are going to have. Will determine the kind of thinking they are going to have. Mm -hmm. You look at somebody like Imam al Hussein alayhi salatu was salam, Surah al Mulk. Open Surah al Mulk. He was raised. In the house of Nubuwa, in the house of Risala, he was raised by one of the best or the best grandfather, Rasulullah, sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi. 
raised by Fatima al-Zahra, one of the best, Nisa, Ul Alameen, one of the best, one of the chosen women. And Imam al Hussein alayhi salatu was salam was raised by Ali ibn Abi Talib alayhi salatu was salam, one of the greatest. So if you look at Imam al Imam Hussein alayhi salatu was salam from whichever angle you look at him, you see nur, you see blessings, and of course. This is the kind of environment in which Imam was brought. And he himself, alayhi salatu wasalam, Allah, through the Prophet, alayhi salatu wasalam, taught us in al Hussein bizbahu al Huda wa safinatu al Naja that indeed Hussein is the lantern of guidance and the shape of salvation. So look at the kind of mindsets that gave birth to the mindset, to the Husseini kind of mindset. And going to the other camp, you look at the grandson, you look at the grandfather of Yazid, you see a person like Abu Sufyan, who accepted Islam by force. You look at the father of Yazid, Muawiyah, who is known for cursing Imam Ali alayhi salatu wasalam for how many years? And you look at Yazid himself, you see that the mentality of Abu Sufyan is another story. The mentality of Muawiyah is another story, hence the mindset of Yazid. So Yazid, mindset, is battling with the Husseini kind of mindset. Maybe before I moved, for those of you who are very familiar, when it comes to the history of Islam, you will realize that Abu Sufyan dealt with the Prophet alayhi salatu was salam, had a setting, a particular attitude towards the Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam. Now the son of Abu Sufyan, Muawiyah also dealt with Imam Ali alayhi salatu wasalam. So we see the thinking of the Amawi behaving in a particular way. The mindset of the Amawi behaving in a particular way towards the Ahlul Bayt alayhimu salatu wasalam. And now the son of Muawiyah. Yazid is also thinking and behaving in a particular way towards the son of Imam Ali alayhi salatu wasalam. So in each and every point, we see the negative mindset in the battle with the positive mindset. Salawat. Maybe, inshallah, it is very important for you to be reminded according to the Quran al Karim, Surah Al Mulk, when a man is destroyed, is because of his mindset. And when a man is raised, it's because of his mindset. So Imam al-Hussein is where he is 
because of the mindset that produced him because of his mindset and yazib is where he is because of the mindset that produced him or because of his mindset on the day of qiyama surah al-mulk speaks surah al-mulk is the chapter that speaks about the kingdom of allah the don dominion of allah tabaraka wa ta'ala hadith by imam as-sadiq alayhi salatu was salam and other imams teaches us that on the day of qiyama people will stand before allah tabaraka wa ta'ala for 50000 years waiting for allah to judge them and respected brothers and sisters thousand years of our years of our world is equal to one year in the spiritual world so we will stand for 50000 years waiting for allah tabarak wa ta'ala to judge us quran says hamsina alf sana 50000 years in surah al-mulk verse 6 allah is telling us that on that day the only challenge of the people and the complaints of the people will be about their mindset quran speaks bismillahir rahmanir rahim walil ladina kafaru bi rabbihim adhabu jahannam wa bi'sal masir on that day the ungrateful people will end jahannam for themselves and allah explains idha ulqu fiha sami'u laha shahikan wa hiya tafur and then when allah tabarak wa ta'ala throw them in the hell they will see the blazing fire you know becoming very angry takadu tamayyaz min alghayz and the fire in which they will be thrown in will be very angry kullama ulqiya fiha fawjun sa'alahum hazanatuha alam ya'tikum nadhir and each time the group are thrown in the fire the securities in the hell fire will be asking them did allah not send you messengers prophets and imams to guide you to warn you did allah not send you ar rusul wal anbiya and imams to guide you and listen to what these people will say alu bala yes allah send messengers to guide us yes allah brought anbiya to guide us yes allah brought a imma to guide us but what did they do? what did we do to them we kill them if you look at the history before islam or as we see in the quran 70000 prophet were killed in the community of the banu israel and these were the anbiya that was sent to come and guide the ignorant they kill them when you look at the ahli al-bayt alayhim as-salatu was-salam they were killed one after the other we are talking about imam al-husain the challenges he faced the oppression he faced yet this imam is the lantern of the of guidance is the sheep of salvation so they will say to allah in surah mulk qalu bala kad ja'ana nadhirun yes the warners the prophet came to us the messengers came to us the imams came to us fakazzabna and we did not give them attention wa qulna ma nazzala allah min shay'in in antum illa fi dalalin kabir 
we dealt with them in a very harsh way. Look at the mentality of Yazid. Look at the forces of Yazid. Knowing 100%, knowing very well about the position of Imam al Hussein. But what did they do to Imam al Hussein? But now, I am drawing your attention to this. Now they complain about their mindset. Why they are finding their, themselves in this position? All who, and they will say to Allah on that day, Law kunna nasma'u. If we were listening, yesterday I tried to explain the significance of the ear. And I spoke about two kinds of ear in Islam. The first kind of ear is the ear of our children. From day one, Islam will say, give azan and a karma to your children. And somebody will even ask the question, what is the significance? Is it not crazy to be speaking in the eye, in the ears of the children? According to Imam Sadiq alayhi salatu wasalam, the most active ear is the ear of children. Salawat. When you read Ikama, in the left ear, it's a way of shaping the mindset of your children at that age. And when you read the Azan, it's a way of shaping the mindset. That is why, according to Islam, when children are at home, you don't speak things that are not advisable. You don't say something. Sometimes we make mistake as parents to think these are children. If they are just children, then why do you have to speak in their ears at day one? And now the second kind of ear is the ear of a person who have passed on. And this is another craziness. Somebody might raise the point. Now this man has died or this woman has died. Does, do they hear? Do, do they listen? Yes. We see the Imams at the Kabaristan in the grave stepping inside the grave and holding the ears of people who have died. And they will use sentence like, Esma, listen. Efham, understand. When the angels come to you and they ask you, you should say this and that. So on the day of Kiyama, people will be saying to Allah, Law kunna nasma'u. If we were listening, why is the listening so important? Because when you listen and listen well, it shapes your mindset. And according to historians, that Yazid was not a good listener. But Imam al Hussein alayhi salatu was salam was a good listener. Came from the house of Wahi. Muhammad wa ala Muhammad. Law kunna nasma'u. You know, if you look at the Quran al Karim, I might not be able to finish it and tomorrow will continue. Allah has two ways of addressing people. If you look at the Quran carefully, you will see Allah addressing insan, the ajma'ihi, fully, in totality. Hence, you will see the Quran say, Ya ayyuhal insan, or Ya ayyuhal nas, or you person, or you who people. But the second way of addressing insan is where Allah addresses individual body part of insan. Quran is so beautiful. Hence, we see the Quran addressing the hair of insan. We see the Quran addressing the eyes of insan. 
We see the Quran addressing the nose of insan. We see the Quran addressing the hands of insan. Zakhr al fasad fil bar wal bahri fa bima kasabat aydin nas. We see the Quran independently or individually addressing the stomach of insan. Fi mutuni ummahatikum. We see the Quran addressing the private part of insan. And we see the Quran talking to the ears of insan. Quran says, Al yawma nakhtimu ala afwaghihim. Allah even addressed the mouth. Allah addressed the tongue. Al yawma nakhtimu ala afwaghihim. The day we shall seize their mouth from talking. Wa tukallimuna aydihim. The day we shall make their hands to speak because the mouth can lie. وَتَشْحَدُ أَرْجُلَهُمْ And the day we shall make their own legs to witness. Look at how Quran addresses insan. So these people on the day of Qiyamah will say to Allah, لَوْ كُنَّا نَسْمَعُ If we were listening, if we made good use of our faculty of hearing, I will not kill you. That if we were rational, if our IQ, if our mindset was good, ma kunna fi ashab al-sair, we will never find ourselves in this horrible position. So Imam al-Hussein alayhi salatu wa salam, by and large, is the victim of the negative mindset. Salla ala Muhammadin wa ala Muhammad. Wallahi, today the cat that you have at home, you remember to give him, to give it water and food. The sheep, the animal that you have, when you slaughter them, you give them water. You say, Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. You honor the animal. But look at the son of the Prophet alayhi salatu was salam. Look at the son of Fatima alayhi salatu was salam. And look at the way they treated these people. Allahu Akbar. That is the mindset we are thinking. And then if the mindset is weak, poor, you see yourself being merciless, you see yourself being pitiless, and you see insan to be insignificant, you behave anyhow. We ask Allah tabarak wa ta'ala to help us, inshallah. Inna lillah wa inna ilayhi raji'oon ala la'natullah ala al-qawm al-zalimin wa sayya'lamu al-lazina sayya'lamu ayyan min qalabin yang qalibun Inshallah tomorrow we will continue inshallah with our topic developing a positive mindset in the light of Ashura and Karbala We ask Allah tabarak wa ta'ala to forgive us inshallah to have mercy upon our parents, to have mercy upon our families, all those that are not feeling well for the barakat of this humble majalis, we ask Allah tabarak wa ta'ala to give them shifa, inshallah, whatever mistakes we might have made, we ask Allah tabarak wa ta'ala to forgive us, inshallah. All the brothers, inshallah, and sisters are sitting in this majalis, may Allah have mercy upon you, inshallah. We ask Allah tabarak wa ta'ala, the brothers, who are listening to us, following us on Zoom, we ask Allah to fulfill our wishes, inshallah. Inna Allah wa malaikatahu salluna ala al-Nabi Ya ayyuhal ladhina amanu sallu alayhi wa sallimu taslima. Allah, Allah, salli ala Muhammad.